Now we can see this play out in another couple of examples. Okay, so let's look at another example. So let's assume, and, and we'll make this sort of really drastic so that it's obvious, but let's assume that the bond has already been issued. So this bond from the first problem has already been issued, and but a day has passed. So a day later, something crazy has happened. The market rate has climbed from 6% to 14%, which means a new bond, a potential purchaser can earn 14% today in another investment, right? So they can buy some bond issued today is going to pay them 14%, even though just yesterday we bought a bond and we're paying and that we're only getting paid 6%. So if I'm trying to sell my bond because I want to get out of it, I'm like, great, I made a terrible deal. I want the 14% bond. I don't want to get stuck with this 6% 6 bond. I'm going to sell my 6% bond and buy a new 14% bond. What is someone willing to pay for my old bond? And the answer will be, of course, that they have to be willing to pay less than what I paid just yesterday. Because why would they buy this off me when they could buy something better today? Right? So again, I think this is most clear if we look at the cash flows. Right? So let's compare the cash flows for these bonds for the, this investor that we're trying to convince. Right? So on one hand, we have the bond I bought yesterday. And the bond I bought yesterday has the same cash flows because the cash flows don't change. The bond I bought yesterday, I paid for is a contract. And that contract hasn't changed just because the market rate has skyrocketed today. So the cash flows are still exactly what they were yesterday, which is that I get a $60 coupon every year for five years, right? Only a day has gone by. And then I get my face value of my bond back. So my bond yesterday at 6% has the same cash flows. I paid $1,000 for this bond. I thought it was a great deal. However, a new bond today is gonna earn 14%. Right? And that means that this new bond is gonna have cash flows of $140 a year, right? A thousand times 0.14 is 140, right? So that's the, the coupon payment on this new bond. And it is also going to have a final face value in five years of a thousand bucks, right? So we know, we know by definition that if you buy the bond today, you are gonna pay a price of a thousand dollars. So we know that an investor can pay a thousand bucks for this bond today. So why would anyone be interested in my old bond from yesterday, right? You can make more than double for the, exactly what I paid. So I'm trying, I'm out there, I'm trying to sell my bond for a thousand bucks because I don't want to lose any money. That's what I paid for it yesterday. But everybody's calling me crazy because they can go pay a thousand bucks for something that pays more than double uh, what, what I'm offering. And that means that the only way for me to possibly sell this bond is to drop my price. I have to sell it at a discount, right? And so the price that I have to be willing to sell my bond at is the present value of the cash flows, but at a new rate, right? Given the new yield to maturity in the market. So I still have a face value of a thousand. I still have payment of $60 per year. I still have an in of five years. Remember, only a day has gone by, so we'll just make it easy. We'll still call it five years. But the IY now, the IY is still the yield to maturity. And the yield to maturity is the market rate. It's not necessarily the coupon rate. And the market rate has jumped from yesterday. It is now 14% per year instead of 6% per year. And so when I compute the price of this bond, we see that the only way I'd be willing or I'd be able to sell this bond is if I dropped my price to $725.35, which is, 
which is a huge loss for me, right? I'm, I'm losing $275 if I try to sell this bond simply because the rates climbed so much in a day, right? And what that means is that what I, what the reason why the price has dropped is that this price now makes these two bonds equivalent. Someone would be willing to pay me $725 for a contract that pays $60 a year, but still pays $1,000 face value at the end. And that is equivalent, that, uh, that difference here is, the, is what's making up the difference here, right? So they're gonna earn, today somebody would pay 1,000 bucks for $140 coupons, or they'd pay $725 for $60 coupons, and the difference in price makes these two bonds equivalent. Okay? Now, when we have this case, right? uh, when we have the case that the present value is less than the face value, then the bond is called a discount bond. Because we are selling it at a discounted price. Right? Now we could look at the opposite case here too. And the opposite case is instead of say the price uh, of the rate climbing to 14%, what happens if the rate falls to 3%? Right? So again, let's look at the cash flows of these two contracts. Our old bond from yesterday, right? well, it's still paying the same thing. Still paying a 6% coupon, which means it has coupon payments of $60 per year. Again, the contract cannot change. So even though a day has gone by, the cash flows of my bond have not changed. However, today, a new bond is only gonna pay 3%. So the new bond's coupon payment is 1,000 times 3% or $30 per year. So it's gonna make a $30 coupon payment every year. And then of course return its face value of 1,000. And we know by definition that this means an investor will have to pay $1,000 for this bond. if they want to buy it today. But now I'm in the opposite situation. Now I'm sitting pretty. Yesterday I paid $1,000 for something that pays me $60 a year. Today I'd have to pay $1,000 for something that only pays me $30 a year. So now everybody wants my bond. And if, if I was going to be willing to sell it, I certainly wouldn't be willing to sell it for 1000 bucks. I would only want to sell it for a premium. I would be willing to sell this bond maybe for more than $1,000, for more than I paid for it. Right? So if we look at, say, the price of my bond now, nothing has changed in the contract. The face value is still 1000 The payment is still $60 per year. The remaining maturity is still five years or four years and 364 days. All that has changed is the yield to maturity. The market rate has gone from where it was yesterday, which was 6%, to where it is today, which is 3%. And so if I compute my present value now, I get $1,137.39. A premium. This now makes my bond equivalent to the lower paying bonds. Someone is willing to, I get this additional money up front, and in return, they get this additional money every year in the future. Right? And so when the present value is greater than the face value, the bond is said to be a premium bond because we are selling it for a premium.